Welcome, woodworkers of the world, to the Swedish knife grip sessions. This time I want to talk about how to be sharp, how to stay sharp, and how to do some honing and stropping. It's very important to have a sharp knife. It's essential. And how do I know? Of course, when you start to carve and you have to put in a lot of power in there, and you can see stripes in the wood, you have some, you have some bad edges there. So you need to strop them with a stropping, and with some stropping compound, let's put it on there. And then you can do like this, back and forth. And in a moment I will show you how to do that. To how is really an important thing to do. So you need some good honing stones. You can do with a coarse and a fine one, but the fastest way is to have a coarse, a medium and a fine one. I mainly work with diamond stones nowadays. They are really efficient and they stay flat, which is a good thing. So here I have a Mura Knieve 106 and it's freshly grinded on a Tormek grinding stone. So I have a hollowed out bevel here. It's a little concave. And that's a good thing because when I'm putting this bevel on a flat surface, it will just take at the very edge and in the back of the, of the bevel. So I don't need to hone that much. It's less friction and it cuts better later on in the wood too. So I start with the coarse. I use some water on it to get rid of the metal, which I'm gonna cut away from the blade. And then I'm placing it really flat on the stone like this. And I'm putting the thumb on the opposite bevel and holding this, press it firmly down and go sideways like this. And at the very top, I'm lifting it up a little. Go back and forth like this. And why do I have to do this? You see, when you have been grinding, you have a burr out here, which you really need to get rid of. It's a kind of metal rest that you don't want to be in there. So honing keeps the burr going back and forth and you kind of polish it away from coarse to medium to fine and then stropping it away so it's totally gone and then you can cut. So never leave any burr on the edge. So you should be able to feel the burr with your finger like this after you've been honing on the coarsest one. I continue to work with a medium one like this. And since you get used with the honing stone, you can actually hold it in between your fingers and your thumb muscle here like that. But be careful so you don't cut yourself out there. You can really tell that I've been practicing this uh, kind of honing grip a lot. Put your index finger on the opposite bevel here, back and forth, and then rotate and push out your thumb and press it down firmly on the honing stone, like that. I do this about five, six times each time. And you can also see at the very end where the bevel is a little more obtuse, you can lift it up a little so you are all the way out to the edge. That's enough. Rinsing the honing stone and take the finest honing stone.
that's good enough. And now we come to this cropping piece of wood. This is just a flat surface. It's sawn, I think. And I'm using a cream polish by the brand Autosol, which is really efficient and pretty cheap. You can buy it almost everywhere. I'm putting that on the wood like that, spreading it out a little. And now I'm holding this to my body like that, pressing it to my body so it's steady and firm. And then I'm pressing this bevel again towards me, but with the edge away from me. And you can clearly see how fast this polished compound is taking away the burr from that very edge. Using the same technique as when you're honing, pressing the bevel firmly down. It's a concave bevel on a flat surface, so it's easy to push down hard. Back and forth, many times. And now I can actually try and see if there is any burr left. And I'm doing like this. I'm taking my nail like that and slicing on my nail. And if I feel any vibrations, I have still a little burr left. Normally you can find it down here and up here because you missed a little. This has a little at the top and just a little at the very end. So I'm taking a few strokes extra here at the bottom and a few strokes extra there at the top. Like that. And then I can touch it very lightly with my thumb, very, very lightly. And if it kind of bites back, it's, it's super sharp. And then of course I can test it on my arm like this and see if I can cut some hair. If you do that, it's really good, super sharp. This is one of the most precious moments when you have a freshly honed and stropped knife. It feels like you are the richest man in the world with a super sharp Mura knife. I just love it. Good luck.